Hello and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series video and this is a lecture which will provide you with a deeper level of knowledge on the file storage service. So these are the main features of file storage. First of all it's important to remember that this is network attached storage or NAS storage. This means that your servers are attached to the storage via an Ethernet connection and in fact um, it will use the Ethernet connection that you specify when you create your server. This is important to note because if you are making lots of calls to your storage um, then you'll need to make sure that you factor the storage bandwidth in when configuring your network links. So network links to servers are redundant, but the speed of those connections can be variable since other traffic is also using the connection, and occasionally bottlenecks can occur. So consider this when using file storage, uh, and if this is an issue for your use case, then you might want to consider block storage instead. File storage is provisioned independently of your servers, uh, and you can link it uh, to either virtual server instances or bare metal servers via the NFS protocol. So another thing to remember here is that if you're using security groups with your virtual servers, remember to add a rule which allows access to your file storage via NFS. The service is highly durable and resilient, meaning that you don't need to worry about data loss from things like disk failures, and this means that you don't need to create RAID arrays, for example. Uh, the service includes data at rest encryption, so if an unauthorised um, someone were to somehow access the storage, they still wouldn't be able to read the data because it's encrypted. And of course, file storage allows you to access the same piece of storage from up to 64 concurrent Linux hosts. Now, a point to note here is that file storage can only be accessed from Linux hosts. Part of the security model for file storage is that when a host is authorised via the console to access file storage, it creates a username and password for the host in the background. So unfortunately Windows can only access NFS shares that allow anonymous access and so it's not possible to mount a file storage share on Windows. Provisioning and managing the file storage is pretty simple and it's all done through the console and I'll show you um, some of this in the next video. Essentially once you have provisioned the file storage then you have to authorise hosts to use it. So it's not a free-for-all and it's not the case that any old machine in your account can just access it. Once you've authorised a host, uh, you then just need to mount the storage from the operating system using the appropriate mount command, and then you can just start to use it like any other drive on the computer. Now when you create or provision your file storage, one thing that you need to consider are the IOPS per gigabyte, um, which is the input-output operations per second, or to put it another way, uh, the number of reads and writes that your servers are likely to make. And this can affect the performance of your application, particularly if you set it too low. So when provisioning, think about how frequently your application might need to read or write to the storage and set the IOPS accordingly. The good news is, assuming that you, you don't configure the storage at the 0.25 IOPS per gigabyte to start with, um, you can scale your IOPS up and down at a later date, which is great, especially if there are peak workload periods, for example. Uh, there's two types of file storage, so there's endurance and performance, and these offer different levels of IOPS. So with endurance, there are four different levels of IOPS shown here, and generally, endurance file storage is most suitable when the requirements for IOPS are ill-defined or where lower IOPS are required. So with 0.25 IOPS per gigabyte, you would expect pretty um, low levels of disk activity. And note that you can't migrate up from this tier. So two IOPS per gigabyte is a good, um, is a good level for general workloads, such as departmental file shares and rising up to 10 IOPS per gigabyte might well suit a small database such as uh, MySQL that's linked to a website, for example. Oh, be aware um, that you can only create storage up to four gigabytes in size at this level of IOPS for endurance. Performance file storage is where you have a much better idea of what IOPS are needed and where those IOPS exceed what endurance is capable of. With performance, you're pretty much able to define the IOPS per gigabyte that you need. Um, though this is uh, scale depending on how much storage you provision, and I'll show you more of that in the next video. Now another really useful uh, feature of file storage is snapshotting, and you can think of a snapshot as a copy of your volume or disk at a particular point in time, and they're really handy for backups. Now you can take manual snapshots or you can configure automatic scheduled snapshots uh, on an hourly, daily or weekly basis, uh, or a mix of all four to suit your needs. Note that you'll need to provision adequate space for your snapshots. The more you take, the more snapshot space you'll need. There's also a limit on the number of snapshots that are retained, uh, which is 50 through a schedule and another 50 manual snapshots. The key really is to get a balance on the number of snapshots and only take what you really need. When a snapshot is taken, the state of the files are effectively frozen at the point and further updates are then incremental. 
So this means that snapshots don't take up as much space as the entire volume and it only takes around a second to make a snapshot regardless of the size of disk. Recovery from a snapshot is simple and uh, it's done via the console but remember you can only recover an entire snapshot and not single files. So if you think that you would need to recover specific files only uh, then you need to consider other backup and recovery options. Now you can also set up replication and that's uh, replicating the storage to, an, uh, to another data center and you can also set up duplication and that's creating another identical volume uh, for, for file storage but we'll cover that in a later video. Now as I mentioned earlier you can make changes to your file storage after provisioning. So if you find that you need more storage then you can scale up your capacity without downtime. And this can be really useful uh, where you want to start out small and grow because of course if you, you don't really want to be paying for storage that you don't need from the outset. Note that you can't reduce your storage capacity though. So if you find that you have too much storage then you'll need to copy to another smaller volume amount that which will require some downtime. So my advice is to start smaller and then grow. So you can also adjust IOPS. So, so you can do this so long as you haven't selected endurance 0.25 IOPS per gigabyte. So this is great if you have peaks or again if your requirements grow over time. With this you can reduce the number of IOPS, though only once in a billing cycle, but you can increase the IOPS at any time. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope it's given you a bit more insight into the file storage service on IBM Cloud. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to provision and mount and use file storage.